With an attentive heart, erase my sins from the present and past. To you I pray, bow down, prostrate. You are the only one worthy of praise. I stand before you with an attentive heart. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Brothers and sisters, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to another episode of Lessons from the Quran As I've said in previous episodes, what we're trying to do is to take some benefits from the Quran to try to take some practical lessons from the Quran and in the last episode, we began looking at Surah Al-Hujurat, and it's with Surah Al-Hujurat I want to continue again today, inshaAllah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And as is the custom of this series, inshaAllah, I'd like to begin by reciting the ayat, and then inshaAllah by us looking through them and trying to take some lessons from them, inshaAllah ta'ala. So after saying, A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem, Bismillahir rahmanir rahim إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُنَادُونَكَ مِنْ وَرَاءِ الْحُجُرَاتِ أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ صَبَرُوا حَتَّى تَخْرُجَ إِلَيْهِمْ لَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِن جَاءَكُمْ فَاسِقٌ بِنَبَأٍ فَتَبَيَّنُوا فَتَبَيَّنُوا أَن تُصِيبُوا قَوْمًا بِجَهَالَةٍ فَتُصْبِحُوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلْتُمْ نَادِمِينَ وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّ فِيكُمْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ لَوْ يُطِيعُكُمْ فِي كَثِيرٍ مِنَ الْأَمْرِ لَأَنِتُمْ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ حَبَّبَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْإِيمَانِ وَزَيَّنَهُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ وَكَرَّهَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْكُفْرَ وَالْفُسُوقَ وَالْعِصْيَانِ أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الرَّاشِدُونَ فضلا من الله ونعمه والله عليم حكيم. We continue with our recitation and our benefiting and taking lessons, insha'Allah, from Surah Al-Hujurat. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the fourth ayah of Surah Al-Hujurat, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُنَادُونَكَ مِنْ وَرَاءِ الْحُجُرَاتِ أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ صَبَرُوا حَتَّى تَخْرُجَ إِلَيْهِمْ لَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُونٌ رَحِيمٌ Allah Azza wa Jal mentions those people who would call upon the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم from behind the hujurat, the hujurat being the dwellings that the Prophet وسلم, and his wives would live in. They were very small sort of apartments. They are called the Hujurat. And people would call out to the Prophet وسلم, especially from the Bedouin companions and some of the people who had not yet learned how to address the Prophet وسلم, and they would call out saying, Muhammad, Muhammad. And of course, this is not our etiquette with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and that's why Allah azza wa jal says, "وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ صَبَرُوا حَتَّى تَخْرُجَ إِلَيْهِمْ لَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ." That if they were to be patient until you came out and then deal with their need when you chose to come out to the people, that would be better for them. And Allah Azza wa Jal is 
the oft forgiving and the bestower of mercy. There's a lesson and a very practical lesson in this and again we don't want to go into all of the tafsir about the people who called upon the Prophet ﷺ from behind the hujurat and who they were and where they were and why they did it and what happened. But practically in our lives, this contains again part of the etiquette of dealing with the Prophet ﷺ and indeed dealing with the people of knowledge. And there is more than one of the pious predecessors who used to implement this ayah with regard to the scholars of Islam that they would not knock on their door or phone them and disturb them and ask them things but they would wait until they came out to the people and then they would address them at that time and that's not to say that it's not allowed for a person to knock on someone's door or that it's not allowed for a person to seek to communicate with someone that's not true but there's an etiquette with the scholars of Islam that as much as you can, you try your best to be like the better people mentioned in the ayat. That you wait until they come out to you. That you try to be someone who doesn't disturb others. Someone who doesn't bother others. Someone who takes an opportunity when it's there, but doesn't harm others in seeking to get an opportunity to achieve something. And I think that's perhaps one of the most practical lessons that we can take from this ayah insha'Allah ta'ala and when there's a need and when we need to call upon someone we need to bother someone and disturb someone for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then Allah azza wa jal is ghafoor and Allah azza wa jal is rahim Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who forgives and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who bestows mercy and both of these two names al ghafoor and al rahim relate to the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah is the one that bestows mercy Allah azza wa jal is the one that often forgives then Allah azza wa jal continues saying subhanahu wa ta'ala ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu third time in this surah that Allah azza wa jal has addressed the believers calling upon them saying ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu O you who believe this time as the other two times vital advice for the companions and for the ummah after them radiyallahu anhum wa ta'ahum if a fasiq comes to you and I'm going to talk about a fasiq in a second inshallah if a fasiq comes to you with news fatabayyanu then make clear tabayyanu make clear or get clarity on it perhaps that's the best way of translating it get clarity in another way of reading the ayah again we talked about the different ways of reading the Quran فتثبتوا. فتبينوا فتثبتوا. and again the Mus'haf of Rathman didn't have ta and ya and noon and ba the dots written on so the words are all compatible with the Mus'haf of Uthman and they're narrated both from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he would read it فَتَبَيَّنُوا and he would read it فَتَثَبَّتُوا فَتَثَبَّتُوا make sure of it فَتَبَيَّنُوا clarify it who is the fasiq? the fasiq is the defiantly disobedient the one who openly disobeys Allah Azza wa Jal so when you see somebody we all have times when we disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when a person does an open act of disobedience to Allah in public, when someone does an open act of disobedience to Allah in public, then this is fisk. For example, the one who drinks alcohol in public, not the one who may fall into something and nobody knows about it and Allah conceal that from them, but someone who does so in front of the eyes of the people or the one who shaves their beard because they go out in front of the people openly disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the one that lets their trousers or their thobe go below the ankles because they're the one that openly disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in front of everyone and it's enough of a sin to disobey Allah in private so how about to disobey Allah in front of all of the people فَتَبَيَّنُوا this person can't be trusted with news. And this has some fiqh to it, because in this day and age, many, many Muslims are not practicing 
And if we were to say that none of them can be trusted with news, then we put ourselves in a bit of difficulty. At the time of Imam Malik, if someone shaved his beard, his witness would not be accepted. At the time of Imam Malik, if a man shaved his beard, his witness would not be accepted and he would be declared to be a fasiq. In our time, Allahul Musta'an, Allah's help is sought. That the overwhelming majority of the Muslims openly disobey Allah. And so the judges, they have their own opinions about when to accept and when not to accept. But the point here is to verify news when it comes to you. Why? أَن تُصِيبُوا قَوْمًا بِجَهَالَةٍ فَتُصْبِحُوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلْتُمْ نَادِمِينَ In case you accidentally, you inadvertently harm a people out of ignorance and then you become regretful over what you have done. And how many times, brothers and sisters, does this happen to us? News comes to us, we believe the first thing that we hear and off we go Allahum Musta'an acting upon it and accusing somebody and we run up to somebody and we say to them how dare you have said that about me how dare you have done that with me how dare, how dare and we don't even know for certain that it's true how many times does someone come in the masjid and say that brother doesn't like you, that brother spoke about you and then you have enmity in your heart and you don't even know if it's true or not or you who believe if somebody comes to you who is a fasiq person comes to you who is defiantly disobeying Allah they don't fear Allah they don't even fear to disobey Allah in front of the people let alone to disobey Allah in private then why would they fear Allah with regard to what they say and they tell you something and then you take what they say and you go to the people and you act upon it and you harm a people out of ignorance and you feel really sorry after that have nadama, you feel sorry for what happened. After the break, we're going to continue talking about this ayah and how we apply it in our lives, insha'Allah ta'ala. Until then, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A friendly message by Dr. Zakir, mother of all evils. According to the World Health Organization, every year, Millions of people die due to the consumption of alcohol. My colleagues, the medical doctors, nowadays say that alcoholism is a disease. Therefore, we have to be sympathetic towards a sick alcoholic person. If alcoholism is indeed a disease, then it is the only disease that is sold in bottles. It is the only disease that is advertised in the newspapers in the magazines, on radio broadcast stations, on television satellite channels. It is the only disease that has outlets licensed to legally spread it. It gets a revenue for the government. It is the only disease that causes violent deaths on the highways. It destroys family life and increases crime. It is the only disease that has no germs or viral cause. But our Creator, the Almighty says, in His last testament, the glorious Quran, in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 90, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amun, O you who believe, innamal khamru wal maithuru, most certainly intoxicants and gambling, wal ansabu wal azlam, dedication of stones, divination by arrows, rich min amli shaitan, these are an abomination of Satan's handiwork. First, abstain from such abomination that you may prosper. Alcoholism is not a disease, it is Satan's handiwork. Abstain from it that you may prosper. Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Analyze your mistakes. Have you ever tried to overcome your anger? Realize your weakness. Do you find it difficult to control your tongue? Diagnose your moral sickness. Have you ever felt that your intentions are corrupt? Learn the steps essential to nourish our souls in purification of the soul. Next on Peace TV.
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, welcome back. We're talking about Surah Al Hujurat and we're talking about the ayah. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu in jaakum fasiqum bi naba in fatabayyanu and to see bu kawman bi jahalatin fatusbihu ala ma fa'altum nadimin. And brothers and sisters, what I want to explain to you now is really very important from a practical point of view. And that is that this ayah doesn't just apply to the fasiq. It applies to anyone who you are not sure of their reliability. Like the person who is unknown, like the non-Muslim. If the fasiq, the Muslim who disobeys Allah, you're not allowed to take what they say without checking it, then what about the non-Muslim? What about the non-Muslim? Surely the non-Muslim is even more deserving of checking what they say first. Newspapers, brothers and sisters. Television, news reports. How many times do we hear something said about the Muslims and we take it as though Jibreel brought it down from the heavens, alayhi salam. Don't believe what you hear. Don't believe what you read in the newspapers until you make sure that this is the case. And if you act upon this thing and then you realize that you made a mistake, you're going to regret. The anonymous person who comes, you don't know who they are. That person who you don't know who they are. They come and they say to you, brother, you know, this has happened. Or brother, someone said this to me. If you don't know them, even if they're a practicing Muslim that don't have any major sins that they do or are not known to do any major sins and are not known to frequently do minor sins and are not known for openly disobeying Allah, but you don't even know who they are. Check the news. We're not saying they're lying. But we're saying, brothers and sisters, check the news. Make sure of it. فَتَثَبَّتُوا Find out from another source until you're confident that it's true. How many times have families broken up because of news that was spread that wasn't true? How many times have friendships been destroyed because of news that was spread that wasn't true? We must be so careful of this. Check the news that you receive. Especially when it comes from people who openly disobey Allah, people who frequently do the minor sins in front of others, frequently do the major sins and are known for doing the major sins, or a non-Muslim, or a person who you don't know who they are, they're anonymous to you, you don't know anything about them, you don't know if they are truthful or not. Because if you don't know them, they might be a fasiq. They might not be a fasiq. They might be reliable, they might not be reliable. So check the news that you receive. Allah Azza wa Jal continues by telling us in Surah Al-Hujurat, وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ فِيكُمْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Know that amongst you is the Messenger of Allah. لَوْ يُطِيعُكُمْ فِي كَثِيرٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْرِ لَعَنِدْتُمْ If he was to follow you or to obey you in much of the matter, you would have made difficulty for yourselves. If the Prophet ﷺ was to have followed everything that he was advised and everything that some of the companions said to him, Allah Azza wa Jal says, you would have found it difficult. Allah Azza wa Jal blessed you, like that noble companion who asked about the Hajj radiallahu an. He said, Afi kulli amin ya Rasulullah. Prophet ﷺ turned away from him. He said, أَفِي كُلِّ عَامٍ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Every year, O Messenger of Allah, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi turned away from him. He said, أَفِي كُلِّ عَامٍ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Every year we have to go to Hajj, O Messenger of Allah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لَوْ قُلْتُ نَعَمْ لَوَجَبَتْ If I say yes to you now, you will have to do Hajj every year. If the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was to have followed that, everyone would have to do Hajj every single year. Imagine how difficult that would be. One of the blessings is that the Prophet ﷺ was guided by Allah Azza wa Jal to what is easy for this Ummah. It's been made easy for the Ummah of Muhammad ﷺ. It's been made easy. The religion is ease. It has been made easy for the Muslims. We make it difficult for ourselves. This is the lesson from this part of the ayah. That we are the ones who make things difficult for ourselves. Allah Azza wa Jal has made a religion that is so easy that if you are in space or if you're on the South Pole, you can practice this religion without any haraj, without any difficulty. 
without any trouble. It's ease, but we make it difficult for ourselves. And then Allah Azza wa Jal mentions an ayah that is of so much practical benefit to the Muslims. As every ayah of the Quran is, but this one has for me a particular place. Allah says, but Allah has made Iman beloved to you. And He has made it appear to be beautiful in your hearts. And He has made you hate disbelief. And He has made you hate defiance. And He has made you hate disobedience. Those are the rightly guided. Look at this description of the rightly guided. Are you a person who loves Iman? Are you a person every time you see a brother with a beard, you love that brother to have a beard? Every time you see a sister wearing the niqab, you love it because this is Iman. You love to see Iman. You love people who have Iman. Or are you one of those people who work against them to undermine them? To make life difficult for them? How many brothers come and say, the reason I shave my face is not because of my employer, but because of my mom and dad. And the sister who comes about the hijab, and she says, I'm struggling to wear the hijab, or I'm struggling to wear the niqab. I say, sister, why? Is it your university? We'll fight for you. Is it your workplace? We'll take them to court. Who is it that we can do that we can help you against this enemy of Allah? She says, Wallahi, it's not my workplace. And Wallahi, it's not my school or my university. But it's my mom and dad that don't want me to wear the hijab. A'udhu billahi samir alim min ash rajim How can someone reach a level of being such an enemy to the religion of Islam? How can someone reach such a level of being such an enemy to the religion of Islam that they want their own children not to practice the religion? May Allah save us from reaching the level where we hate Islam that much. Look at the Rashidun, the people upon the truth, the rightly guided. They are those who love Iman and Iman is beautiful to them. Aisha radiallahu anha has a statement about the beard that the most beautiful feature of the man is the beard. Which of us today would say the most beautiful feature of a man is his beard? We'd say his body, his abdomen, his arms, his biceps, his legs, whatever. But who would say his beard? Who would say that the best thing about a man is his beard? The most attractive thing about a man is his beard. The people who Iman has been made beloved in their hearts. When they see Islam being practiced, their hearts fill with joy. They see nothing more beautiful and nothing more admirable than people practicing the religion. And they hate nothing more than disbelief. And Fisk, what we're talking about, the Fasik, the defiancy and the disobedience and open disobedience of Allah and the major sins. And they hate to disobey Allah. All of us disobey Allah, but when we do, we should feel that hatred of that disbelief in our hearts. How many of us, we feel happiness? And some of the Salaf, some of the pious predecessors, they said, al musiba kull al musiba The worst kind of musiba, the worst kind of calamity, is when we find our happiness in the disobeying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we find happiness in disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is there any musibah greater than when you feel happy when you disobey Allah? But the believer, when he disobeys Allah, you feel sad. You feel afterwards in your heart that, SubhanAllah, I disobeyed Allah, I shouldn't have done that, that wasn't nice. That's Iman. Those are the Rashidun. When they make a mistake, they feel it in their heart. As for those, who just can't wait till the next time when they disobey Allah, question your Iman. Go back to your Iman and correct your Iman. And then Allah Azza wa Jal says the most beautiful statement. Fadlam min Allahi wa ni'mah. Wallahu alimun hakim. Did you think that all of this that Allah gave you was because you worked for it? Wallahi, not you and not me, brothers and sisters, deserve Islam. Not you and not me, not one of us on the face of this earth deserve to be guided by Allah. If Allah was to put all of us into the hellfire, it would be just. But it is a virtue 
and a blessing from Allah. And fadl is something you give to someone on top of what they deserve. And a ni'mah is something you give to someone despite the fact that they haven't done anything for it. Fadlan min Allahi wa ni'mah. This is Islam. It's a virtue you didn't deserve, a blessing you didn't deserve. Wallahu alimun hakim. Allah Azzawajal doesn't just hand out this blessing like the person who comes in the mall with a big wad of banknotes and just throws it out to everybody. Allah Azzawajal knows exactly who is deserving of it. Wallah, none of us deserve it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows those who are the closest to it and those who are striving for His sake. And those are the ones who are going to meet this description. May Allah Azza wa Jal make you and I from them. Until the next episode, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.